people don't understand certain places um, of truth, you know. I was telling my own a few days ago, oh yesterday was it, I was telling them that truth is relative to certain people but truth is absolute. But even in the truth absolute, there are dimensions of truth. Do you understand what I mean? There are dimensions of truth. And I gave them an example and I said, for example, if somebody stole money, we would say it is true, she stole money. It's true, she stole money. But if she's a born-again Christian and you're dealing with the Jesus Christ who does not cover but remits sin, in that dispensation, we can say you're lying. It's not true. Why? Because heaven holds no account of the stealing. Are you seeing where I'm coming from? So then what, at, in that level of truth, what does heaven see? You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and the wisdom to know the difference. That is why you encouraged the man of God when others so uh, differently. Those are the things that make ministers. Those are things servants of God can't do. Those are things ministers do. There's a difference. Praise God. We are born servants of Christ, but we are also supposed to be ministers of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Now, I'll also carry a story from Hannah, but I'm going to take another dimension of it. Women, you're going to enjoy this. Praise God. Men, you're going to receive it for your wives. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, the Bible says in chapter 1, uh, first, the first book of Samuel, and it says, and you remember the story of Elkanah having two wives, Penina and, and Hannah. And the verse 6 says, And her adversary also provoked her soul for to make her fret because the Lord had shut her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, and therefore she wept and did not eat. Somebody say, Hannah did not eat. And the Bible says, um, in the eighth verse, And then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? I'm not I better than ten sons. I am I better than ten sons. Underline that. I am I better than. Underline that. I am I better than ten sons. And the Bible says, this is who the husband telling her. And the Bible says in 9 verse, And Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, listen to, to Hannah's prayer. If thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will thou will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, underline man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth, now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved. Uh, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. And therefore Eli thought that she had been drunk. Underline that too. Eli thought that she had been drunk. And Hannah answered and said, no, my, uh, sorry. And Eli said unto her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid. For a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more. Long story short, she gave birth to Samuel. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that the words that are spoken are spirit. 
and their truth. Hallelujah. And because they are spirit, they ought to be experiences. And these experiences align us to purpose in God. That's what truth does. Hallelujah. The primary place of freedom, according to God's word, is for a man to be aligned to purpose. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. When God sends a message through Moses, Moses going to Pharaoh, he said, let my people go that they might serve me. That was the definition of freedom, service. Are you hearing me? Men were not just free to eat food. Men were not just free to sleep well. Men were not just free uh, to enjoy life. Yet it's part of it. We were called to enjoy life. Hallelujah. But the ultimate line is, and I always tell people, that you cannot be free unless you are aligned to divine purpose. You can drive as many cars as you want, have as many houses as you like, put on the finest golden apparel, but if you're not aligned to divine purpose, you're not free. If you're not serving God, you're not free. Do you hear me at that level? If you're not a servant of God, you're not free. Praise God. You might not be at the pulpit like the people you've seen. You might not be a worshiper like my dear ladies you saw, their Dora, but you might have a certain part in the distinctions of the ministry of God. And if you can align you, if you align can if your spirit can be aligned to purpose, then that means that you're free. Praise God. I'm defining freedom in another place and another plane because we are living in a time where men don't even understand freedom. Or men which are bound actually appear to be free quote-unquote, because they have a misinterpreted understanding of what it means to be free. So when you read, for who saw the sun set free, it's free indeed. Let's leave the level of cancer. Let's leave the level of flu and cough. Because you see, to the Christ, it's not even a matter that he's crucified on the cross. It is finished. Do you understand what I'm saying? You look at Paul walking his life in the gospel, and he says, sometimes I'm torn betwixt, as of to be in the flesh for your sake, or to go and be with the Lord. He says, which is far better. He says, but Lord, I will abide in the flesh for your own sake. Meaning the only reason why Paul is in the flesh is for people. If Paul is done with his ministry, he can go home. Are you hearing me? And go home the right way. Not accident. Do you understand? Not accident. Not dying funny, funny death. They're not godly. Praise the Lord. They're not godly to die a certain way. It's not godly. Tell anybody I'll not die a funny way. I'll sleep when it's my time. Are we together? So, if, if a man is ministering and seeing life from that dimension or that dispensation, He understands why Paul says, set your eyes on things above. Where well, Christ is. Where is he really? The place that puts Christ above is not just... It's not just the distance between earth and heaven. You understand? Sometimes the things above are not necessarily things high. I don't know if they're making sense. Sometimes the things above are not necessarily things high. There are things that are high, but they are not above. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can find a very little man, but he's a director of a company. And there's another guy probably who is so tall. Did I mean that, oh yes, this guy can be high <laughs> by height, but he's not above by rank. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why God draws the difference between height I mean, what it means to be high and what it means to be above. Some Christians don't understand that when the Bible says that, for example, you read the scripture, 
And the Bible says that you are above all principalities and powers. Seated in Christ. Far above all principalities and powers. Far above. Far above. Far above all principalities and powers. Far above. Now, he didn't say higher than principalities. He said far above. There are spirits that are roaming in the air. Right? By geographical location, they are on a higher altitude than we are. But we are above them. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are above them. But on altitude, if you look, they are higher than us. So, you know, that I saw, and sometimes I saw Christians pulling down strongholds. We pull down strongholds. We pull down. But, you see, but in, their, in their imagery, in their imagination, they are trying to, they are thinking that there are things up there. They are pulling them down. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are trying to what? Pull down certain things that are up there. We pull down principalities. We pull down powers. We pull you down. We render you powerless. We render you powerless. You, you even claim that they had power. So you render them powerless. But you see, if you read the scriptures, the literal word for strongholds, it's in the mind. Your strongholds are in the mind. Everything above is above in your mind. It's not above as it appears and you think it is. Are you following me? So he says, our people of, of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Right? Now, I want you to, to go, to go, to go, to go before. Do you realize that there's a semicolon at the end of strongholds? Semicolon means that there is a a relationship between this clause before and the clause next. And the next verse says, casting down, hey, casting down, and every high, where is the height? In your head. That exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Where is knowledge? Hey, where is knowledge? And he says, and bringing into captivity every thought. Where is the thought? To the obedience of Christ. Did you hear that? There's a head issue. Your brain, the way you think, the way you're wired in your head. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. There are things, okay, now. On that understanding, let me say, there are things above other things. There are things higher than some things. Are you hearing me? We can, we can impart high no, higher knowledge. Praise the Lord. We can impart higher knowledge. But we can also take men from one level to another level above. I don't know whether you understand the difference. Knowledge can go high, but the height of that knowledge does not, it's still existing in the same sanctum. However high it is, it's existing in one sanctum. It's like in one place of dimension of spirit, you can go high in one dimension. First dimensional, but you're going up in the first dimension. And you can be at the tip of the first dimension of the spirit. So they say, yes, you're at the height of the first dimension, the height of your career. But you are not above that dimension. I don't know if I'm making sense. If this, this is a height, for example, from here up to this ground. If I bounced the ball and I bounced it so hard that it touched the roof, you'd say the ball, the ball went up until it touched the roof. It, that was, it went to a certain line of height but it does not skip the dimension of the room. So I can say that we can, there are heights of knowledge and there are experiences of knowledge above. I don't know if I'm making sense. See, that is why when 
God meets the holy men eh, of spirit and the watchers thereof. He makes a statement and says, and this is to the decree of the watchers. And a word by the holy men. He says that God, the Bible says, ruleth in the kingdom of men. Right? And giveth it to whosoever he will, and setteth up one over it. And the Bible says, and setteth up over it the bestest of men. Did you hear that? So, God, the living God, he has, I mean, this is attested by two guys, eh? the place of watchers and the holy ones, right? To the intent that the living may know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men. So, there's a place where the most high rulers in the kingdom of men. He rules in the kingdom of men, right? And he says, and he gives these kingdoms to people, particular individuals. There are people who own certain things. There are people who own certain places, spiritually. They have an influence over certain places. There are places, there are things that are given by God to us. You see, there's a generous line of the inheritance by the body of Christ. Praise God. It's like when the Bible says that I pray that you may prophesy. It doesn't mean that all of you are going to sit in the office of the prophet, but you can all have the gift of the prophet. Gift of prophecy is different from the office. Right? Or if he says that by now you ought that no man teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. It doesn't mean that God is disqualifying teachers. It only means there's, there's stuff you can teach, but there's also stuff you cannot teach. Right? Because there are people anointed for it. Am I making sense? I'm taking us somewhere so far. Hannah's cry. So, if you remember in classrooms, for those of you who went to night nice school, <laughs> so I went to night nice school. There was a time when you went to primary seven, for example, and then they start classifying A, B, C, right? Then they put the clever ones in A. Then they put mm in B. Then they put a mm -hmm in C. Right? Now, you'd find an individual in C, and then they give him a report card, and they tell him he was first in class. Even goes saying, I was the first in class. But he was the first in class C. Are you hearing me? If he leaves class C, and he enters class B... <laughs> He has a lot to learn. Are you following the child of God? And if he leaves class C, I mean, if he comes, they, many of them, they are promoted. Then they come to D. Then they find harder brains. You understand? Then they say, last time my son was number one, this time I'm seeing he started for. They say, no, no, let us explain. There are classes of knowledge. Do you, do you understand me? Even the teachers who teach, they add extra teaching on class C. Because they know class C is slow in what? In understanding. But they are all ranked in their own classes. Are you hearing me? Tell me I'm going somewhere. They are all ranked in their own what? Classes. They're all ranked in their own classes. It's like the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit works in dimension. It's like when Jesus is in the first dimension of the Spirit, he's 30 years. You realize that in that class, he was growing in wisdom and stature. Are you hearing me? He was growing in wisdom and stature. You never heard him speak. Right? But he had not yet begun his ministry. He was serving the Father in the synagogue, but he had not begun 
his ministry. You understand what I'm saying? Led by the Holy Ghost in the wilderness, comes back in the power of the Holy Ghost, and the first miracle happens. Right? But when you, when Jesus leaves the earth, he comes back and the Bible says, by many infallible truths, what did he do? He made himself known. Many infallible truths. Many infallible truths in that level. <laughs> this is now, this is before he now goes to heaven, right? His spirit, his body is appearing, disappearing, entering walls and showing them wound, wounds. He is like a spirit. He can enter, but he can eat. You know, he's confusing, guys. Eh? The miraculous is still on him, for a fact it's true. But the Bible says, he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And that's another place. Do you understand? Now he started to speak things of the kingdom. Pertaining the kingdom. Pertaining the kingdom. Now he's connecting something and says, you see, there are many things I want to tell you, but you're yet unable. Are you seeing? He knows they might not receive everything at that level. But there are, after many infallible proofs, right? By proving he was alive, because the biggest doubt he was, he was he didn't leave, right? But you see, 40 days with them, he was speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. 40 days. He was just seated there listening. 40 days. 40 days. Now number 40 represents what? Trial. Right? Now there's a reason why it was 40 days. And why God wants to relate a certain place of... Why would he then define 40 days and then attach them to trial? What trial are we talking about here? Because you see, all of us have testations in the spirit. But we have different testations according to what is inside us. Our responsibilities are different. Our responsibilities are different. Do you understand? The way Paul was tested is not the way John was tested. But they were all men of God. Praise the Lord. But you realize the way Paul viewed the kingdom is different from the way John viewed the kingdom. Yet they all beheld the kingdom. But one man was given the grace to lay the foundation of the gospel. And another one was a chief apostle in the Jerusalem church. God does not reward positions. He rewards faithfulness. Are you faithful to what God called you to do? Beautiful. But... The testations, divine attestations of such men are different. Praise the Lord. And to those men also, transgression as defined is different. Hey, I've transgressed. I've transgressed before you, Lord. I, I was, I was, I stole. I am sorry. See, that's your level. This man is putting himself in check as a man of the spirit and he says, if I build the very things I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Very things I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Let us labor, the Bible says, that we lose not the things that we have wrought for. He says, because if we lose those things, we shall not receive a full reward. What reward are you even talking about? Do you even understand what reward you're talking about? But the man says, he says, he, he says, let us labor. That is in John. He says that we lose not the things that we have routes that we might obtain a full reward. Because they even understand the weight of the reward and how a man receives part of it and the fullness thereof. And there's a man in the world who doesn't even have a clue what I'm talking about right now. Are you listening to me? He says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that, that we might receive a full reward. That we might receive a full reward. Now, this is another place of ministry. This man is not laboring to rout. This man is laboring to lose not what they've wrought. He's preserving apostasy. 
Because there's a reward on men which preserve a posterity. There's a reward in the doing. There's also a reward in the preservation of what is done. See, we, we are gifted. We can do. But we can lose it. If we don't understand why it comes. It's like, that's why you see revivals. Eh? Revivals really, okay, the spirit of reformation in the simplest term comes to remind men. There's nothing new under the sun, right? But it comes to remind men. That's what reformation is. And that is why the biggest war in the spirit realm comes when a man comes with a spirit of reformation. If you read the First World War, the history of the First World War, the end of the First World War bust the Reformation. The end of the Second World War bust the Reformation. These were things even hell knew were coming up and created physical experiences. These world wars are nothing compared to spiritual war. Because the Bible is very clear that the things that are physical were brought about by the things which are not seen. What men saw was, was physical. There were spiritual experiences of things that were happening in the lives of men. Praise God. Everything we see, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hezbollah, Al-Shabaab, all of these are spiritual entities. There's nothing carnal about them. They're not debating over ideology. They're Sunni, they're Shia. It's not an ideology issue. Of course, to, to the level of how some people think. That's why I don't read some newspapers. It's not pride. No. Some people are too shallow in the way they, read, they think. Some newspapers are too shallow. You find a born-again Christian reading. Uh-huh. Pastor Ramukuta Kolachi. What? You're reading? How? What? You see, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? He's reading pastor arrested with woman in bar. <laughs> pastor was arrested with a woman in the bar. His wife was at home. The newspaper. Then you get your phone. Share. Pastor run. Check this out. <laughs> You're at that level. <laughs> you should see me reading newspapers. You laugh. You, I just... That's how I read newspapers. Because they are too shallow. They are almost predictable because you're dealing with human beings and they are creatures of habits. You can predict habits. There's one thing you can't predict. <laughs> are you hearing me? You should be reading about men of God and women of God. Because it says, you see, that's the wind. The Bible says it bloweth where it listeth. You, 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 the Bible says it, it bloweth where it listeth. You, you know where, where not it cometh from or where it goeth. But the Bible says, but you what? You feel the sound thereof. And, says, and so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Say so everyone that is born of the Spirit. Say so everyone that is born of the Spirit. I would find Ezekiah most fascinating. Then they killed two men on Kampala Road. Okay, sad. They killed them. I'm sorry. I could even be related with them. I am sorry. You understand what I'm saying? But you see, when you get into kingdom issues, things change. A man came out, oh, Jesus. Ah, my father's died. I think I have to tell these guys to, so that I can, <laughs> brother, let the dead bury their dead. Eh? Let's go and build a kingdom. Eh? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. At that level, you understand? 
and, and of course, there are some people who are here who are watching and they're like, Iba Nange, how rude. <laughs> how, how rude. How can, maybe this, this she religion, eh? How can a man lose his own father? And you tell him to leave his own father, even to bury Jesus. Eh? Let him at least go and what? Bury sincerely. I think there were women around him. You know those women who said, yeah. Can't he bury his own father? And Jesus tells him, follow me. Let the dead bury their dead. A guy cleaned his eyes and went preaching. He went preaching. I wish some of you understand even where I'm, what I'm talking about. That's another place. It's another place. It's another place. Why? Because we're talking of a very deep responsibility. Now a man comes and tells you, how be to them which are wise or mature spiritually. We do impart this wisdom. Now, there's a man imparting wisdom. There's another one receiving wisdom also to pass it to another person. There are three kinds of ministers. Yet they're all ministers. And even the person being imparted to is also going to reach out. General, preach the gospel. Cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, for lo and with it till the end. I don't know if I'm making sense. There's a man imparting wisdom to them which are mature. There are mature guys who are also ministering to babes. And there are babes who are also transitioning out of immaturity also to teach. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are all in different classes, and they all have a place of operation. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's okay to get house rent. It's very okay. See? But you are to learn to nations. And you can live all your life believing God for house rent. Even get it. And you test fans, I, I can't believe it, I got rent. <laughs> but that was your level. That was your level. Your level was rent. And it's alright to, to have left, to have rent. That's your level. It's okay. Praise God. There's a man asking for food right now. Food is going to be a miracle. There's another one ignoring food right now. Yet he has access to food. Because these are two different people. They are two different people. Now, Hannah, <laughs> ah, Hannah comes to the guy, she fails to eat food, she loses sleep and appetite. Hannah kind of comes to her woman. I know you believe in God for one child. Our entire what? More than ten sons. He doesn't get it. He just doesn't get it. People think Hannah was just believing God for a child. It's because at your level you think Hannah wanted a child. Hannah was not believing God for a child. Hannah wanted a man child. <laughs> Hannah was not believing God for a child. She wanted a child to give to God. Hannah just didn't want a child. I don't know whether somebody understands what I'm saying. Hannah didn't just want a child. Hannah just didn't want a child. No. She was specific. There is something I feel inside me. The agitation of my spirit has a guy in there. When he comes out, I see that he's going to judge the world. When the first kings come through, he's the only guy worthy to pour oil on them. Both. This is the guy that is going to set the foundations of the world back to course. There's a time the world is going to have a scarcity of the word. Visions will be scarce and the word will be precious in those days. I need to raise a man who can sit by Shiloh and bring revelation to that nation. I'm not believing God for a child. I want to serve a nation. That is different. 
That is different. That is different. That is different. That is different. That is different. So, Elkanah is coming and says, ah, I can tell you more than ten children. See, Sahana is saying, look, the issue is not how many children they are. There is a guy I'm feeling in here. And if he comes out a nation, he says, tell your neighbor, dream big. Tell him, dream big. There's somebody inside here. There's something inside here. That is the thing that takes me into the presence. And I sit there and I start to look like I'm drunk. The people who look at me are saying, why are you always drinking? El I mean, El I asked the woman, what are you drinking? Why do you drinking? I'm not drinking. There's something disturbing my spirit. I need to give back to something. It's in there. I don't know its name. I don't even get... I'm not trying to get back at Benina by having a child. I'm not at the level of having children. Listen, I'm not at the level to say I'm comparing myself with Penina. Therefore, she has a child. Even me, I want a child. Oh, she's driving a car. Even me, I want to drive a car. She has a plot of land. I am also wanting paper of land. Penina doesn't have what I have. The Bible says the Lord had shot her womb. This was not even the devil. There was no devil in Hannah's barrenness. That womb was shut for a purpose. And this woman is agitating for the time to say it's there, I feel it. It's not yet impregnated in my soul, but it's inside me. It's supposed to be bad like this. Are you hearing me? There's something inside me. I don't have a name for it. But it's inside. Now, there's somebody observing and saying, huh. ah. e, she's jealous of Penina. Ah, she's comparing herself with Penina. Even as she's boasting. Did you see the song she sang? After she gave birth to this boy? That's when you realize that this wasn't a Penina issue. Even this provocation she received in her spirit. It was not... At the level of if I have a child, it shall be okay. She said, I want a man child. I know exactly what I want. I'm not asking for a girl. I'm not asking just for a normal guy. He said, I want a man child. He said, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall be no razor come on his head. He is a Nazirite. I, I, there's something I want to... Oh, oh, there's something I want to produce. It's inside there. Because what's inside me wants to serve a nation. It's just I want to have babies. If it was for the sake of babies, it would have been okay. But inside there's something deeper than having a baby. But now, women, I wish you understand. He finds a woman and he tells her, in you two nations fight. Two nations. A woman can carry... <coughs> Two. And she says in you, two nations war. Two. Two. God just told me somebody has received it now. There's somebody who has received that impartation. Take it. Take it. Take it. Now. Not tomorrow. He says, For I hear a daughter of Zion travail, as a woman with bath pangs as of her first child. So, we, we are now going past just the place of, I'm believing God for a house. I'm believing God for a car. I'm believing God for a woman. I'm believing God for a man. That's why we are erring. We just, we just want. If you ask for any man, he would not be here. There was a particular man you needed. But if you want to marry yourself off woman, you can marry yourself off any day. But there's a reason why you say, let me wait. There's a particular fellow I want. Some of you, you, you're not, you want to give back, you have not yet. No, listen, yes, I know, I understand. 
But you see, when I get to the point of giving birth, I just don't want to give birth. There's a certain kid I want to come out of my life. Certain kid. Not just any kid. There are many children in the classroom. But there is my child. My child. There are many women, but there is a... Uh, there are many husbands, but there is a particular one. There are ministries. But there's a particular ministry inside my spirit. It's different. It's different. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. The, the, such messages take you above. They don't take you high. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I came by the grace of God to take somebody above, not just high. I, I didn't come to it to, to take you from one place to another place in your dimension. No. I came by the Spirit of God to get you from one glory to another glory. He says there's one glory of the sun. And there's one glory of the moon. And he says, but when you get to the stars, the saints, he says there's also a difference in glory. The sun has one, the moon has one, but when you get to the star, you realize one star differs from another star in glory. And the day the guy is born, a star goes up. He says that for every life that is lit, the Bible says he is the light that lighteth every man that entereth this world. The moment you are born, some star shines up in the sky. That is why they call them superstars. We are the superstars. They are not superstars. We are the superstars. We are the superstars. Tell your neighbor we are the superstars. We are the superstars. We are the superstars. Hallelujah. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. Now, I want to bring this to a close. I think I've spoken a lot. Now listen to me. Hannah's cry was not for a baby. Hannah's cry was, was for some kind of baby. It wasn't for a man. It was for some kind of man. It wasn't for a ministry. It was for some kind of ministry. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this is relative. Like I've thrown the net. Every man right now as I'm speaking is dreaming. You can't now listen to me and think about rent because we are not talking about rent. That is disrespect to the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hannah left her food and meat. And every time they went up, the man discovers that even though meat is available, this woman doesn't want to eat. We are not talking about food. We're talking about what it takes to serve a nation. What it takes to serve a generation. What it takes to write a story. Tell your neighbor we know God. We are moving into a very sensitive time of the spirit. The manifestations of the sons of God have the, the expectation of that manifestation has raised the bar simply from the thing that seeks to prove the sun to the things that seeks to prove the distinction in the sun. Help us. We, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. We are not now seeking to prove we are sons. We are not, listen, we entered the wilderness when we knew we were sons. It's a small temptation to tell me if you are a son of God, turn these stones to bread. Now, I might not even turn them because you see the bigger picture here is we are not turning stones into bread. This, this is not the level of turning stones into bread. No, we are in the level of saying we are past proving that we are sons. But what is the distinction of sound? He says, even things without life, <laughs> even things, that means he expects 
sings with life, all right? He says, even sings without life. Things without life, giving sound. He says, even things without life, even. When the Bible says even, it means he expects the things with life. It's supposed to be obvious. Thank you for your English. He says, even the things without life, giving sound, whether pipe, whether harp, except they give distinctions in the sound. How shall it be known? He didn't say, which is the pipe? No. He's saying, what is pipe? I cannot, listen. We are not at the level of sounds proving we are apostles. No. We are at the level of the distinction that proves the kind of apostle I am. You're no longer at the level of proving that you're a prophet. You're now in the distinction of the kind of prophet you are. You're no longer proving that you're a worshiper. No. We are now, we are in the distinction. Tell your neighbor, I have to be different. He said this thing I has not seen. He has not heard. Has not entered into the hearts of men. That is the agitation of a man of distinction. They, you start to think things I have not seen. You start to hear things. That when a man hears them, he says, no, these ones are not in a book. They, are not, they can't be in a book. They have never been in a book. I am sure no man has ever said them this way. But when you start doing stuff, men will say, no, this with, but there's something on her. We have never seen it. Listen, there was only one Samuel. Probably you might get it better that way. There was only one Samuel. There could never be any other Samuel. Even if you do what? Samuel was Samuel. Samuel was Samuel. The word is scarce. Visions are not there. But the boy sits at Shiloh. And God appears. Even when God can't talk to anybody, he'll talk to the guy. <laughs> he'll talk to the guy. He's serving under a dead man. Now we are not even talking about, oh, I'm serving under the right spiritual man of God. No. He's serving under a dead fellow who has been detached from the spirit for so long. That God can still call him. The Bible says he served God under Eli. And you don't hear, oh, bad company, corrupts good morals. This one, Hannah's boy. <laughs> Hannah's boy <laughs> could not be corrupted. Because what is in this boy is older than Eli. It's eternal. It's the future of a nation. It's purpose. So, even if he sits under Eli, Eli can even tell the boy, this is God speaking. He has to honor him. Because sometimes God speaks like your father. That's why when he calls, he didn't say, I heard Eli's voice calling. He says, I heard you calling. Because there's a way sometimes God speaks like your father. And that's why men who are familiar can't get it. Because they, can't, they, can't, they don't know when God is speaking. They don't know when God is speaking. They don't know when God is speaking. That's all I could, could, could do. That's all Eli could do. Nothing else. Eli couldn't go any further than that. He cannot tell the guy, this is how the guy talks. If you hear his voice. That's it. This is how he talks. I'm not there, but you're there. Go. Because that's what a true father does. Even if he's on the gutters and he's about to die, he'll still say, no, I wish best for you. Why? Because your mother gave you to me after you were weaned. You see, even the time, you remember the time when, 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 uh, when the man of God wants to go up the mountain, he tells his wife, let's go. No, the woman says, no, I'm staying back. Why? Because I'm weaning this guy. There's something I'm trying to put in him. 
raise up a child in the way he should grow. The Bible says when he grows up, he can't depart. This wasn't just breastfeeding. She was releasing logos. She was not just breastfeeding. She, she was releasing rema, a pignosis. So she cannot worry. Have more woman of God. We're younger than Kama Kwangeri. Listen, the, she was, she was, she was, she. After winning, she takes the man and says, Look, he's here. This one, even if he sits under you, have for how many years, he can never be corrupted because what I've put in him. That is called ministry. That is called ministry. You want to be a mother. Why do you want to be a mother? You want to have children. Then after what? Then you enjoy your children. Then after what? Then they build for your house and then you die. That's the level you're at. Wait for my son. You'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Wait for Apostle Grace's son. Still say, preacher's son, preacher's children, preacher's children. No, those are preacher's children. No, my mom is here. She can tell you. She, my mom can tell you. She didn't just call me Grace. She said, God told her, this guy is going to preach Grace. She said, think, Amen. There was something. I had to be. Now, no man can kill me here. Because, like the Bible says, he possessed my reins from my mother's womb. He possessed me. This is bigger than, I just didn't wake up and I happen. I'm owned by God. Tell your neighbor, I'm owned by God. Devil, listen, you can't die. You're owned by God. You cannot fail. You are owned by God. The man said, even if I go to hell, me right now, Apostle, and I make my bed in hell. You understand? Get me the scripture. He says, for even though I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, God would still find me there. And say, Apostle Grace, you're in hell. Okay, let me also come with you. <laughs> what does the next verse say? He says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, he says, even there, you shall your hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Me, even if you see me in hell, I'm possessed by God. You, you might never understand what I'm saying. Touch somebody and tell them, I'm possessed by God. By God! I am possessed by God. 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 I am not alone. I am not alone. I don't walk alone in this world. No. I don't walk alone in this world. You see me alone, but I'm not alone. I'm not alone. That's why I can't be lonely. You can't find me in a lonely hearts column seeking for, for a person. That's why we marry for purpose. We don't marry because we are alone. I'm lonely. The house is too big for me. You're lonely. Lonely. You are alone. He says, I will never leave you. <laughs> alone. You have the Holy Ghost. You're a child of 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 the Holy Ghost. Now I want to finish. Do you know what it means to have responsibility over a generation? Not to just have one church in a city that is big. <laughs> Did you understand? You, do you know what it means? Help her. Do you know what it means? Not to just have a big church in the city, but having the responsibility in the kingdom of men. 
Do you know what it means to stop just being a good worshiper? And you teach this world how to worship God again. Just put that down, otherwise I shall kick everyone. I need some male ushers. Ah, another one. Bring them in front. It's big. It's big. Just put them down. Some you can even put them behind there. They can rest there. Or you can bring them here. There's space here. It's big. Now, what are, you, what are you believing God for? Hannah, what are you believing God for? Do you want a child? Do you just want a child? That woman, you see, do you know in the Hebrew culture, in the Hebrew culture, this is the amazing thing about the Hebrew culture, the child, if, if a Hebrew woman marries an Egyptian man, in the Hebrew culture, that child is Hebrew. It's the only culture that takes the progeny of the mom. That is why when you go on the ground in the lineage of Jesus, you realize they meet people like Rahab. She's a woman. Then she passes it on. God ignores her husband. Now, it's bigger. It's a bigger picture. It's the church. It's the church. Abraham Lincoln said something I'll never forget. He said, no man is poor with a praying mother. That's true. If you're poor, your mother doesn't pray. If she prays, she's not praying the right way. No man with a praying mother is poor. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Now I want to pray with you. I feel like, like I need to pray for some people because of time. I told you. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I told you. Now make this person. What do you want? Now you're in the presence. Speak. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. Speak. 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 I need a show. Speak. 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 Just ignore your neighbor. You speak. Even if you are an usher. Speak. 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 That's a nation now. That's a nation now. That's a generation now. Now. Marala Labakus. Come on. I desire Jesus, blessed love, ransom me. Pray. Come on. On the cross. He took my sin by his blood. He set me free. I desire Jesus. Oh, he made my soul a for our peace, his son, son, is the 
your eyes ahead. It is well. It is well. It is well. Cause you are better than me. Cause you are better than me. And all you do is so possible. Put up the other side. Brother with a black suit come. I don't even know why you're here. Because you didn't plan to be here. But your thing was here. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. What's wrong with us? to me. I want to pray something. I had an opportunity as a young boy, young, to stand before tens of thousands. I'm not talking about 10,000, 20,000, tens of thousands. The most overwhelming experience of standing before tens of thousands is not the numbers. It's the responsibility that comes to your spirit in the knowledge that they all need to eat. And I saw men feeding tens of thousands, millions of pieces. You'll have the grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive it. Some of you, because of you, nations are going to be saved. Because of your children, nations are going to be saved. Generations are going to be retrieved from the hand of the enemy. Restoration is going to come to your land because of you. Because of you. Okay, let this be the last one. Receive it. Receive it. If everybody comes, I might sleep here. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That's enough. 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 That is enough. That is enough. That is enough. Wait. That is enough. That is enough. Receive it. Now listen. Woman in white, come. Now, I don't know whether you have dreamt or somebody around you has dreamt, but I've seen a dream of death. And the devil wanted to claim you very early. But this is what the Lord tells me to tell you. You cannot die early. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. 
We rebuke that spirit of death. We decree and we declare that she will live with long life. She must fulfill. And wherever you have suffered loss, says the Lord, God restores. You will not lose again. These hands will not build and another man takes over. I've seen it. I've seen it. You understand what I'm saying? God says it will not happen again. In Jesus mighty name. Somebody say I have a destiny. I have a story. If you're sick and you came in after the minister, the man of God ministered and you're so sick you can touch where it's paining right now. Right now in the name of Jesus start to receive your healing. I rebuke that spirit of infirmity and disease. I command disease out! In the name of Jesus. Sir, with a straight shot, come. Straight shot, you sir, yes. Yeah. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Come. I need to pray for you. I don't know why, but I see an attack here. What's wrong? There's pain here. Raise your hands right now. Go! And never should you come back again. How long has that pain been? About one hour ago. It's gone. In Jesus' mighty name. So pastor, everything I touch on the blame. You receive something this afternoon that can never leave you the same. Any man who has understood the message tonight, even if if you want to stay no more, it's too late to be no more. It's too late for your children to be no more. It's too late for your sons to fail and your daughters. He says, and the names of your children shall go ahead of them. And the nations, the Bible says, shall call them blessed. Even your children, they'll look at them and say, this woman's children, this man of God's children, they are blessed. I receive it, God. I receive it, God. We are going to change government. Approved funny leaders and establish others. In the name of Jesus. We are going to appoint men who are supposed to be appointed. And we are going to fire men who are supposed to be fired. We are putting the foundations of the world back to course by the faith of the gospel in the name of Jesus.